So I'm moving on with my trip through Vinegar Syndrome and I have stopped on to the Amityville Cursed Collection. This is a series of four movies um, that are loosely linked by having cursed objects within them. Now, I'm sure I've seen a lot of the Amityville movies, um, but they're not really ones that stick in the memory and the parts that have stuck in the memories kind of get jumbled up between what movies are what. So I jumped into, chronologically, the first one, uh, which is from 1989, which is the Amityville Horror, uh, or Amityville 4, The Evil Escapes, and this one's about a haunted lamp. And the more I watched this one, the more I realised that there were a lot of scenes from this that were seared into my memory. A lot of things that really had stuck with me. The movie opens with a wonderful scene of a car full of uh, priests driving up to the Amityville house there to do a gang exorcism. It's as fun as you would expect it to be. It's over the top, it's kind of silly. They're all in their rooms. They initially go into the house and instantly split up. One of the younger priests goes to a room where uh, this horrible uh, looking lamp is there. The kind of thing that's only designed for horror movies and nobody would ever use in their household. It's uh, kind of wooden with a big ball at the top of it, two arm-like structures with a couple of finger-like light bulbs at the end of it and he sees the evil go into it before he is thrown into the wall and passes out, awaking in the hospital uh, weeks later, only to discover that the, the lamp had been sold in a garage sale um, and had been shipped to this uh, woman who had bought it, bought it as a joke present for her sister and shipped it out to her. And she gets it just as her family is arriving, her daughter, um, who is there with her son and daughter as well. The, the partner has died recently. They're moving in with their mother to save some money and try and get her back on her feet again. But of course, things start going bump in the night. We have a bunch of characters in a, a, a house. Um, well, there's two daughters in this one. we got a younger one and an older one. The younger one starts to see visions of her dead father in the lamp talking to it and doing the usual kind of creepy kid stuff that just freaks you out in these kind of movies. You get the grandma who starts to think that everything eh, wrong that's happening in the house has been brought on by her daughter and her wayward eh, children. And we get some wonderful scenes of horror in this movie. Now this movie was primarily made as a TV movie, but has had eh, inclusion of some gory scenes added in. And it really does feel like it watching the movie. The, the scenes that are, are kind of gory in nature uh, have generally nothing to do with the plot. Uh, they're just kind of added in. There is one ridiculous one that, that feels overly forced where there's been a problem with the pipes and they um, bring in a plumber to deal with it who goes under the house. Uh, of course, the house kills him. And then somehow, and I'm still not sure how this happens, manages to drive the van out the street and away to make the woman think that the plumber has just left and it makes absolutely not a lack of sense but I found it to be incredibly funny. There's several moments in this where you're just squeamish a little bit with certain things that are happening. There is a, a scene that stuck in my head with the garbage disposal where uh, the guy's putting his hand down there and the sound design's wonderful and the clunking and chunking of chewing things up is terrific and it's just wonderfully horrible at the same time. I, I just found it to be uh, deeply, deeply uh, one of those things that psychologically scarred me that I didn't realise it. The look of the lamp was something that stayed with me and for a TV movie it's surprisingly competent. The acting's fairly well done, the, the, the photography's quite good, um, a little bit TV-ish but that's to be expected um, and I think it does have a bunch of atmosphere and scares. We get that priest coming back into the movie in the final third to try and battle evil and get this thing away but uh, you know it leads down typical tropey paths in there but I think there's enough goodwill with Amityville 4 to actually make it one of the better ones I've seen so far. Something that kind of gives me that courage to further delve into this Amityville box set that I've got. So Quick question for you guys out there. Have you seen uh, Amityville 4, The Evil Escapes?
let me know your opinion in the comment box below and I would love to know what is your favourite Amityville movie that's not the original because there are bucket loads of them just curiosity you know thanks for watching and I'll see you next time Man V Film